Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I wanted to show you the difference between Docker Run and Docker Compose. Now, as you can see at the top here, I've got a Docker Run command. This kicks off an Apache HTTPD Docker container, and it's heavily parameterized, specifying the amount of memory, CPUs, port mapping, and even a volume mapping for the Docker container. That's a lot to type out on the command line, but I'm telling you, it will work. Now, as an alternative to typing all of that out on the command line every time, you could instead use a Docker compose file instead of doing a Docker run command constantly. You take all of the information that's in that Docker run command, but you put it into a YAML file, into a nice, handsome text file. And then when you actually want to run your Docker container, you just say Docker compose up. Docker will then read this Docker Compose YAML file and configure the container accordingly. So, which one would you rather do? Type this out and have your fat fingers make a mistake? Or put everything into a text file once, maybe even check it into a source code management tool so you can maintain a version history of it, and then just type the words Docker Compose up. <laughs> I know what your answer is. Your answer is B. But anyways, let's actually run this. I'm going to copy this run command just to show you how it works and really emphasize the difference between Docker run and Docker compose. Now, as you see, this does try to load a website into the Apache Docker container. That's what the volume is used for. And so I'm going to open up this Windows PowerShell into this number guesser folder. If I actually open up uh, Windows Explorer here, you'll see there's the number guesser folder. And it's actually got a subfolder called website. That's what gets deployed right here. And I'm just going to paste that command in. And look at how long that command is. That command is taken up all of the screen and more. So it's uh, quite a formidable opponent, let me tell you. Now as that docker run command is running, it's going to pull that HTTPD image. If I come up here to docker desktop for Windows, you'll see that that HTTPD image was downloaded. If I click on the number of containers running, you'll see my Apache app is currently running and that's the name of the container that I provided in that run command. It should be running on port 88 on port 80 and hosting my website and I can actually prove that there's the website being hosted on the C drive, but I want it on localhost. So let's see what happens. Here we go running on localhost and you can see that the application is running now. That was the Docker run command. I want to prove to you that I can do exactly the same thing using Docker Compose. Well, exactly the same, but different. And I guess if it's exactly the same and different, it's not exactly the same. Regardless, I'm going to stop this container, maybe even delete that container so that it's completely gone. I'll leave that HTTPD image there just so I don't have to download it again. But I'm going to take this Docker Compose file. I'm going to copy the whole thing and then i'm going to go back to that folder where i ran this powershell command and i'm going to create that docker compose.yaml file right in there it's just spelled docker compose.yaml get rid of that txt there we don't need that and then let's go edit this file with notepad right click head it with notepad and i'll bring notepad over here paste that information in then as you can see all of that information is coming from that example i showed you earlier it's got all the information from that docker run command but now it's going to be saved in this docker compose.yaml file right in the subfolder of that website that i showed you so there we go right there now, docker-compose.yaml is being saved right in that folder that PowerShell is looking at. So I'll come over here, and now what I'll do, I'll just say docker-compose up. It'll think about it for a minute, and it'll say, hey, I'm going to create your website. I'm going to 
start the server and I'm gonna get everything running for you. And actually, if I come over here, take a look at the number of containers that are running, well, you see we've got my number guesser container that's running my website. It says it's all running on port 80. And if I come over to port 80 and do a little refresh again over here, you can see indeed the application is running on port 80. So I've just proven to you that this docker compose command can do exactly the same thing that the docker run command does. It's just that in this docker compose command, it's a lot easier to manage and a lot easier to write. Now, there is sort of a part two here. Now, imagine that you actually wanted to run two containers. Okay, so, you know, you start off your Apache container, and then maybe you're going to start a Tomcat container on a different port, and that needs to be parameterized as well. Well, with the Docker run command, you would have to first run the first run command to start off Apache, and then you'd have to run the second command to start Tomcat. Again, might be a lot of work, a lot of typing to do. But what you can do with Docker Compose is you can actually put a reference to multiple containers all in the same file. So if I wanted to add the Tomcat server, to my Docker Compose file. Let's add in a Tomcat service. And we can actually run my web app, use the latest Tomcat, assign CPUs and memories, even do a port mapping for port 8080. And I could run this with Docker Compose up and now I would have two containers running. In fact, I could get really crazy and maybe even, I don't recommend this for the light of heart, but Heck, why not add an Nginx service as well? We'll have to put it on a different port there. Maybe reference Wayne Gretzky on the port. But now we can actually have Nginx running as well. And so there you go. Instead of having three Docker run commands, one to start up Tomcat, one to start up Nginx, one to start up the Apache HTTPD service, well, you can type it all into just one single Docker Compose command. And then I'm going to come over here and just stop this container that's already running. Let's get rid of that <laughs> and start off. Start off small. I think we've only got HTTPD here. You'll see a couple of other containers get downloaded when I run this Docker Compose command. But again, I'm going to run Docker Compose against this Docker Compose YAML file. Type in the good old Docker Compose up. Now you will notice in that list of images there in Docker for desktop, you'll see that, well, you'll see that Nginx image will come up and you'll also see that that Tomcat image will come up as well because those are all referenced in this Docker Compose YAML file. But as you can see, all of this stuff is happening at once. We no longer have to write three different Docker run commands in order to run three separate containers. We can put it all together in one. And not only does that simplify the commands that you have to run, but it also allows all of these containers to run in a common environment, be run together, be stopped together. Um, and then it sort of creates like a common single application for all of your pods. Now I did make one error here at my website twice. So I'll do my website 01 and my website 02. You got to make sure that all of your containers have different names in them. So I'll just do Docker compose up once again, and that should make things a little bit easier. Uh, but now if I go over to my list of containers, you can see that yeah, I'm now running Tomcat. I'm running the Apache HTTPD service. I'm running Nginx, and it's all running according to the contents of this Docker Compose YAML file. And if I went to port 99, I should see a reference to Nginx. All right, there's Nginx. Port 80 still has my application running on it. I'll do a hard refresh to prove that. And in fact, even on localhost 8080, Tomcat will be running. Now I'm just going to warn you, I haven't deployed anything to Tomcat. So when I go to port 8080, it'll say, hey, 
you haven't deployed anything to port 8080, which is true. Um, so I'm getting a 404, but that doesn't mean Tomcat's not working. You can actually see down here, it says, yeah, Tomcat's working. You just have to actually maybe deploy something to it to actually get something a little more interesting than a 404 error. But indeed, you can see that Tomcat is indeed running, Nginx is indeed running, and the HTTPD service is indeed running, all from running one command docker compose up and consuming the yaml file in contrast to having to do multiple docker run commands to achieve the same result so there you go that is the key difference between docker run and docker compose when it comes to getting containers up and running now if you enjoyed that tutorial why don't you head over to the serverside.com i'm the editor-in-chief over there we got lots of great tutorials on docker Git, GitHub, Java, DevOps tool, cloud native development, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter, Cameron MCNZ. And you know, last but not least, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?